Hello, this is Janelle Mercer, and today I'm going to show you how to create a Google Form. One of the first things you're going to want to do is go into Gmail and log in. So we're going to type gmail.com, and we're going to go ahead and log in. And you can log in with just a Gmail address, or those of you that have library email addresses, you can just log in with your full library email address in most cases. I'm going to click Organizational Google Apps Account. I'm going to enter my password and click Sign In. You can also go directly to drive.google.com if you'd rather go in that way. I just like to go in this way because I can always remember how to get into my Gmail and I can always remember the address for that. Okay, so once you're in your mail, you're going to click this little button over here for Google Apps, and we're going to go to Drive. Google Forms are hosted inside of Google Drive. Wait for this to load. Once your Drive loads, you're going to want to go to New then click on more and we're going to go to Google Forms. And in this example I'm going to create a summer reading registration form so I'm going to start by giving it a title and I would highly recommend that you date your forms so that you can easily find them later and if you have several summer reading forms it makes it easier to differentiate between different years and knowing which one's which. So, oh, it automatically named it for us, which is nice. You can also add a description, which is always good. If you need some examples, Cimarron had a pretty good summer reading registration form, and there's other ones in the links, too, on the Thing One post for forms. It'll give you some ideas. You can put in a little welcome. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to spend a lot of time um, writing a form description, but because you guys want to get to the nitty-gritty. So then you can start with your questions, and you're always going to want to give each question a title. So I suggest that you start with name, and I would also suggest that you put the first name and last name separate. This is up to you, though. This just makes it a little bit easier if you're going to do, if you're going to create a spreadsheet, then you can alphabetize it by last name. If they're together, it makes it a little harder to do that. So. And when you're doing a question, you also have options in here. You can do multiple choice, check boxes, a drop down. We're going to do short answer since they're just going to fill in their name. And I would also recommend that you make your important questions like name, if you're going to ask them for their phone number and things like that, I would suggest you make those questions required. You'd be surprised how many people skip the question if they're not required to answer it and then you'll have people that register for summer reading and you may have no way to contact them or know what their name is. So I would make sure that you make fields like name, um, contact information required. We're going to add another question. We're going to make it last name. And again, we're going to make that a short answer, and we're going to make it required. Then we're going to add another question. You'll notice that I add questions just by clicking that Add Question little button right here. And in this case, we're going to make it a multiple choice or a drop-down question. So we're going to do a I am 18 years or older. I'm not going to type the whole thing, but basically this is that you're certifying that you are the legal guardian or parent of the child listed above if you're filling this out. That way you just have parents or guardians filling this out or you have people that you have participants that are over 18 and can um, fill this out for themselves. And I see I put in 2M so I'm going to delete that. And we're going to make this one be a drop down. And I'm just going to put yes or no. 
we're going to make this required as well. Another thing you can do is reorder your questions. If you want last name above first name, all you have to do is drag and drop. I'm going to go ahead and put that back. You can also add images, which this is something new that Google Forms has added and it kind of spices it up a little bit. So we're going to click on add image. And you can upload images from your summer reading CD. If you have them saved on your computer, you can also upload from there. I put one on my desktop, so I'm going to go to upload and choose an image. And I'm just going to browse to my desktop and find it. And I can't remember what I called it, so let's see. Oh, there it is, on your mark. So we're going to go ahead and open that, and it'll start uploading. And then once it's uploaded, it'll automatically put it into your form for you. And you don't have to give it a title. You can leave that blank. I'm going to drag it up so it's kind of in the middle of our form. And as you're working on your form, I'm going to scroll up here a little bit. You also have this preview button, so you can kind of preview it to see what your participants are going to see when they fill it out. So this is what the form looks like so far. And they'll have a submit button on the bottom and you'll see all the questions that are required have a little asterisk next to them and it shows required up here at the top. I'm going to go ahead and close that. You can also change the color, the background color of your form. So we're going to click this little color palette button and I'm going to change it to blue. We'll see what that looks like. I'm going to try one of these other blues. I think I might like this one better. Yeah, maybe not. Go back to the dark blue. <laughs> once you get the color you like, um, once you get the color you like, it'll update itself and you'll be good to go. So that's how the creating the form works. I'm going to do another screencast that shows you how you can share it and also how you can collect responses. One thing I did want to mention is one thing you want to make sure you check is to go to your settings here and make sure if you are on a Google domain where if you have an email address that has your library address in it or your library's URL or web address in it, you're going to need to make sure you go in here and put that anyone can fill this out. Otherwise, the default for the forms is set so that only people in your organization or that have your library, that have a library email address with you can fill it out. So make sure that you check that and make sure it has anyone. And then you also have some other options in here. You can let them submit another response. I would recommend this because if you have someone that's signing up for their kids, they're going to want to be able to just go in and fill it out um, again and again for all their kids. And then you can also make it so they can edit their response if you want. Um, that's up to you. Basically, they can go back and edit it. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Well, let me see if there's anything else on here can also have them see a summary of the response, show progress bar, or shuffle question order. I wouldn't recommend shuffling the question order. If you were doing something like a quiz or something, you might want to shuffle the question order, but when you're doing a registration form where people may be filling it out over and over again, if you change the question order, that'll be confusing to them, or some of the questions would be out of order and not make sense. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And that's pretty much how you create a form. And remember, this is on the admin side. And to preview what it looks like for participants, this is what it looks like. And all they have, well, I'm still logged in, so I can edit it. But um, anyone that fills out your form, all they'll be able to do is fill out the form, unless you give them rights to do more than that. In the next screencast, I'm going to talk about how you can share your form. So if you want to learn more, you can watch that one. Thank you.